Hi guys and welcome to another video. If you're new to my channel, please remember to subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything and it just means that every time I upload a new video, you get notified and um, it helps me grow my channel. As I said, it doesn't cost you anything. All you've got to do is hit that red button and subscribe. So this video then, it's, um, it's been a little while since my last video, uh, various reasons I'll talk to you about later. But the purpose of this video, I wanted to talk to you about pop-up rigs. Now, for the last couple of years, I've had it in my head that people tend to overcomplicate things with rigs and they, if they have a blank session, they tend to swap rigs because they, they seem to blame the rig. And this video, my intention is to try and dispel the myth that the rig is the most important thing. A lot of people seem to think that you have to have the most fancy rig to try and catch the biggest fish, you know, or the most fish. Well actually, I'm going to show you in this video that actually all pop-up rigs are basically the same and it's more about location and bait and having a sharp hook. So in a minute I'm going to take you um, down onto my bait bucket to have a look at the rigs that I've, I've got for you. I've tied up six of the most popular pop-up rigs and I'm going to try and catch a carp on every one of these rigs on this session so a bit of a challenge for myself so we'll see how that goes I've got six rigs so I need to catch six carp in 24 hours um, to prove to you that it doesn't really matter what pop-up rig you use so so yeah we'll we'll have a look at the rigs now and then I'll talk to you about my baiting situation and everything like that and then um, we'll see if we can catch some carp that I've tied for this session. Now, in my opinion, these are probably the most popular and the most well-known pop-up rigs. There's probably loads more, and if, if you can think of any pop-up rigs, please add them in the comments below. I'm always interested in new rigs to find out if there are any genuinely new and different rigs. But what I want to talk to you about with these rigs is the similarities and how people get confused thinking that a different rig is going to do a different job when actually they're all designed to do the same thing. So firstly we're going to name them, so we've got the John Mack rig there or the multi rig. Basically you've got a loop in the end of your coated braid there which goes through the eye of the hook and over the hook and that holds in place the, um, the oval bait screw with um, a rich wear pineapple pop-up on it. And I've actually put the same bait on each rig to make this a fair test because as I said I'm going to try and catch a carp on every one of these rigs. So we need to have the same bait to make it a fair test and actually the rigs are all roughly the same length as well because rig length can make a difference to your catch rate. Um, so we've got the multi-rig or John Mack rig, we've got the very famous hinge stiff rig, we've got a 360 rig made famous by Dave Lane. Uh, there's Ian Russell's flip rig there, which is a bit like a hinge stiff rig, but it's got um, like a, a sinking lead-free leader material as the hook link, as the boom, and it's got a long shank hook, um, but very similar, as you can see, to the hinge stiff rig, just with a slightly different hook and a slightly different boom. We've got a Withy Pool rig, that's Steve Renyard's creation, which is my favourite pop-up rig. And I've caught all my biggest fish on that, well, in the UK, you know, my, my PB, 52 pound 6 was on that rig. And lots and lots of other big fish, you know, um, got a lot of confidence in that rig. I'll talk to you later about why that's my favourite rig, because I do think, as I said, that all these basically do the same job. And <coughs> if you don't know what that last one is, where have you been? Um, you know, comments below if you can tell me what that rig is. Uh, 
Okay, I'll tell you. It's the um, the Ronnie rig or the spinner rig. Been around for three or four years now, and everyone's gone mental about it. Um, in my eyes, not that different to any of these other rigs. So, what I mean by that is they're not that different. If you look at all the rigs, basically you've got a boom section of some description. I've actually put putty on all of these just to help it sink down to try and get it, you know, matching. Um, and then the upright section is is a curve. So look at all of all of these rigs. Look, you've got your multi rig. It's got a nice curve for the upright section. Pin stiff rig curve. Um, the 360 rig, that's using a curve shanked hook. Um, I think originally these were used with like a long shank curved hook, but causes quite a lot of mouth damage to that hook, so I've gone for a standard sort of curved hook there. I think uh, Tom Maker uses it with this setup and catches a lot of fish, so I thought I'd give that a go, and it's a bit safer for the fish, I think. And I've also got um, I'm going to put a little bit of silicone over the eye of the hook there just to make sure it doesn't get caught in the mesh of the net because that's another problem with the 360 rig and a reason why a lot of people don't use it these days. But again, you've got that curved section. Uh, the flip rig, another upright curved section with your pull rig, curved upright section, and again, the running rig uses a curved shank hook. Um, so the upright section is curved. So Basically, they're all the same, slight differences in height, um, but you could tie them shorter if you wanted, you know. I've done the, the sort of, what I think is the most effective height for each of these rigs, but you could do them higher, you could do them shorter if you wanted. Um, and then another similarity is that the bait is on like a D section, so with the multi-rig, you've got this loop that forms a D, You've got the D there for the hinge stiff. Um, the bait is actually on the shank for the 360 bit, but on a on a bait screw you could use a micro ring swivel. But essentially it's doing the same job, you know, it's sliding so it gives a bit of movement, a bit of separation from the hook. Same with the flip rig on a D there. Um, the withy, I've got it sliding on the shank similar to the 360, but it's doing the same job, you know, the fish blows it and it slides back out the way no difference there I don't think and again with the running rig that's sliding on the shank um, I've got an oval bait screw from angling iron there uh, you could use again a hook ring swivel but as I'm using pop-ups it's just easier to just screw on a new bait so you know I hope you agree with me there I mean I'd like to get a bit of discussion going in the comments if, if you've got a thought you know an opinion on this but they're basically all the same you know you've got a boom got a curved upright section, you've got a bit of movement for the bait to separate it from the hook and they're going to be pinned down. I haven't actually put the putty on these yet um, because I was going to start with a multi rig and a withy rig um, and then I haven't decided on the third rod but you know basically I'm going to put out three rods so three of these rigs are going to go out first and then whichever rod I catch on I'll swap the rig and put it back out on the same spot and try and catch a fish on, on a different rig. So I'm not going to use any of these rigs twice on this session. Um, and I'm hopefully going to catch six fish by the end of the session on each of these rigs to prove to you that they all work and it doesn't really matter what rig you use. So um, it still hasn't stopped raining, guys. It's um, you know it's ten past three now. I've been here about two and a half hours or something like that. I wasn't expecting any rain, but you know it's February, so uh, it's just the way it goes sometimes. But I have managed to get my three rods out now. So uh, what I've gone with is a Willy pool rig on one, a multi rig on one, and a Ronnie rig on the other one. And basically what I did when I got here was I made up a mix, um, like a spod mix. So I've got S-Core boilies in there, 
S4 serum from Richworth and then I've got some Vitalin which kind of helps sort of bind it together and bulk it out a bit. I've got some low oil S4 pellets and some standard sort of coarse pellets as well that I just bought in bulk and I've put in some salt into there and also some of the the new Richworth SMC glug and that's about it really so I've put that all together and mixed it up and put some lake water in it to sort of soak into the Vitalin and the boilies and stuff and just soften it and help it to sink really I've spawned that out, I've put out maybe 12 or so large spawns I know we're in February but I've decided to fish this um, lake it's the, it's the stock lake at one of the day tickets where I fish and it doesn't get fished very often and actually what I've found is the fish respond quite well to bait even in the winter so I've put a bit of bait out and um, as I said I'm hoping to catch six fish on six different rigs for you so the idea is get some bait out, get a carpet of feed going and bring the fish in and then fish my different pop-up rigs over the top and hopefully prove to you that these rigs all work and uh, you don't need to sort of be worrying too much about swapping rigs all the time if you're not catching concentrate more on the important things which we will talk about later in the video but um, yeah we're, we're happy we've got three rods out I've, I've just basically because this lake's pretty featureless I've just gone for a nice comfortable 40 yards distance spawned out 10 or 12 spawns like I said and then and, and then put the rods over the top and I've put the bait in a line so it's not in one tight spot it's in a line at 40 yards and each rod is on that line so I feel like it's fair um, but if one rod is producing more, I can always swap them around to make it a bit fairer. Um, obviously, I can't fish all the rods on exactly the same spot, um, but I'm trying to make this test sort of accurate and, uh, and see which... Um, well, just to see that I can catch on all these different rigs, because I know they all work, and I've caught on them in the past, so I'm just going to try and prove it to you. So if I do catch one, I'll, um, I'll try and video it or take a picture of it with that rig in its mouth so you know that I haven't sort of messed with the results if you like um, but yeah I'm just gonna have to be sitting in my bivvy now because it's it's still hammering down the rain I recently re-proofed my bivvy with Fabsil and it's done a brilliant job with the water beading off it so there's a tip for you um, if you you know if your bivvy is getting a bit leaky like mine was um, give it a clean and then paint it with fab seal. I did two coats and it's absolutely watertight again now so that's lovely at least I'm dry inside my belief but um, yeah it's pretty miserable it's getting quite muddy outside already um, if you remember two years ago I did a video on this lake where I was method feeder fishing I'll, I'll link it down below but that, in that video it got quite wet as well and the floor got really slippery and it's a bit of a slope down to the rods and I actually managed to fall on my ass and get covered in mud so uh, go check that video out it's quite funny but yeah stay tuned to see if that happens again in this video but um but yeah we're, we're going to be sitting back putting the kettle on now and waiting for something to happen and i've got my bait out there on my, on my three my first three rigs so as i said if i catch one i'll um, i'll swap the rig and, and try a different rig and, and yeah try and try and catch on all six rigs so we'll see how it goes um and yeah if you if you sort of want to talk about your your favourite pop-up rigs and why you think they're better than any other rigs, I'll be interested to hear in the comments. Um, I just you know I want to get a bit of discussion going about this because I think it's an interesting subject. Um, I think for years we've been told you know you've got to have this rig, and then a new rig comes out, and everyone suddenly got to have this rig. Actually, I think you know a rig's a rig at the end of the day. It's got a hook, it's got a bait, as long as it's fairly well tied and put in the right place it should catch a carp so don't be don't be fooled and hopefully I can hopefully I can prove it to you so yeah we're gonna be sitting back relaxing and hoping something happens guys so stay tuned and I'll keep you posted Right guys, first bite of the session and it's 10 to 4 and I think it was on the multi-rig but we won't know until it comes in 
but at least I know the spot is productive and the bait and everything has worked. So hopefully I can get this in and we'll see what we get. Oh, a little, little baby common, not very big. Oh, and he's gone through the river light, right. Right guys, so as you can see, we've had our first fish there, it's only a small common, probably about four or five pounds, and you can see that pineapple pop-up sticking out of his mouth, and uh, quite a good hook hold, I'll see if I can get close, I'm only filming on my GoPro because it's, um, it's really raining, all the hooks come out there, but you can see right in the middle of his mouth, where the hook was so it's a good hook hold and that was on the multi rig you can see there how it's um, it's pulled down uh, where the, the loop on the shank is like pulled down to the eye there which is what happens with the multi rig but yeah quite impressed with that hook hold uh, maybe I'll have to start using the multi rig a bit more but yeah we know the multi rig works so next I'm going to put out a hinge stiff rig I think. Um, let's get this fish back. Right guys, the fish have obviously moved in on the feed now because I've just, my other rods, my middle rods just gone um, and that was on the Willy Pool rig. <laughs> so same spot, same bait, just a different rig. Um, and yeah, I had to recast this rod because you might have seen there uh, in the footage that that little common went round the line on this one. So I had to untangle that one in the edge. But I rechucked it because it had, uh, I think it had probably pulled the rig off the spot. So yeah, I rechucked it. And uh, it's only been out there five minutes whilst I was unhooking that other fish. Oh, come on. Ah, got it. <laughs> so, that one came off, unfortunately. So, I guess I'll put the Withy Pool Rig back out because we haven't caught one on that yet. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever lost a fish on a Withy Pool Rig, so that's surprising. But yeah, I'll get a fresh bait on there and check the point of the hook and I'll get that back out there. Right, so, first bit of excitement there. Um, you might be able to see I'm absolutely soaked here, it's still peeing down with rain. I've just been out there for probably 45 minutes dealing with landing that fish. You know, it got caught around the other line so I had to untangle it. I had to re-chuck the other rod, then the other rod went um, five minutes after I chucked it out. You know, and I've uh, just baited up as well. So, um, yeah, I'm absolutely soaked and I can't get the camera outside to, to do much filming so it's you know not my normal sort of um, scenic video this one but I hopefully am illustrating a point that you know doesn't matter what rig you use and I've actually had a bite on two different rigs already although I lost one on the Willy Pool rig so that's back out there to fight another day uh, hopefully we can catch one on that one but we've now got three rods fishing again a hinge stiff rig a Withy Pool rig and a Ronnie rig and surprisingly the Ronnie rig, the most popular rig of all time, um, hasn't actually produced a bite yet so it might just be that because it's on the left hand side of the swim the fish haven't moved over that side yet, who knows, um, but it'll be interesting to see. If I don't have anything on that rig sort of by the morning I'll probably wind it in and just check it's not tangled or anything um, and chuck it out again. But um, yeah, we're just coming into the darkness now. You can probably see it's getting quite dark behind me. Um, I'm kind of hoping for a quiet night, if I'm honest, because I don't fancy being out in the rain in the dark all night, dealing with fish and trying to film it and stuff. Uh, it's not going to be very easy. 
So, yeah, I'll, I'll see what happens, see how the night goes. And hopefully we can catch a few more fish to prove that all these rigs do work. I'm um, going to make myself another coffee because my last one went cold as I had a take. So, um, so yeah, I'll catch you guys in a bit, I'll keep you updated and let's see what happens, eh? Right guys, um, apologies for the poor light on this, um, it's 10 to 7 now so it's pitch black outside and I've just had a fish on the middle rod and that's on the withy pool rig so we've now had one on the multi rig, one on the withy pool rig and I lost one earlier on the withy pool rig so you know two rigs have worked so far so I'll just quickly show you this fish, not the biggest, maybe a bit bigger than the last one probably like between eight and ten pounds something like that but um, I'll quickly show you it and we're gonna put a different rig on next um, so what have I got probably gonna go with the flick rig the Ian Russell flick rig next um, so yeah that's two rigs that have worked so far um, let's see if we can catch I've got four more fish to catch now to catch on on all six rigs so it's going well so far got the whole night ahead and most of the day tomorrow so I feel like it's achievable so uh, yeah stay tuned um, I'm going to show you this fish and then I'm going to get that rod back out right guys as you can see here got um, a lovely mirror actually and it's um, a little bit bigger than I thought it might might be sort of scrape a double hopefully you can see in its mouth there the um, the Withy Pool rig which is my favourite pop-up rig and it's really well hooked there just to the left of the centre so I'll just get that out there we go so that's two rigs now performing for me and I'm just going to get that rod back out with the flick rig and uh, yeah hopefully we can get some fish on some other rigs. Woken up to a really cold morning this morning. Clouds have all cleared after last night's rain, and it's it's a beautiful, you know, clear morning. But really, really cold. We've got quite a strong northwesterly wind, I think it is. And yeah, I'm wishing I'd brought my thermals to be honest with you. Um, and we've not had any more fish through the night. We had that one at seven o'clock on the Withy Pool rig, so we're still on two fish. Um, but I wasn't really surprised. Um, last time I fished here, I think it was a couple of years ago, and the same thing happened. I had a couple in the afternoon and then nothing through the night, and then it started feeding sort of um, mid-morning um, up until about lunchtime. So hopefully it'll be the same thing, but with these conditions, this, this clear sky and everything, the pressure's um, increased to 1,025, I think it is. It's not looking that good a bite on the bottom um, but you know I can't switch to zigs or anything because we're trying to get bites on all these uh, pop-up rigs aren't we so uh, yeah we'll just have to wait and see I've, I've put a bit more bait out this morning another five spawns or so just to freshen the area and that left hand rod that was on the runny rig I left it out all day and all night yesterday well from when I got here and uh, it hadn't had a bleep so I thought I'd re that one and actually 
it was fine, no tangles, the bait was still on there. So I think possibly it was just bad luck that we didn't get a take on that one. But I've rechucked it with a fresh bait this morning. Um, so yeah, everything's looking good, sitting pretty. We're just waiting for something to happen again. So yeah, just got my uh, just got my coffee, first one of the day. So I'm gonna sit back, have this, um, probably have some breakfast in a minute. And yeah, uh, yeah, hopefully we can get some fish on these other rigs. Now the observant among you may have noticed that I've had a change of bite alarms. I've been using Delkims for probably seven or eight years now and never had a problem with them. I always liked them, but there was just this niggle in the back of my mind that when you got a take, you didn't really know what was going on because you know the, the bobbin could move two inches and you, it sounds like an absolute screamer and then other times if the bobbin moved really slow the alarm didn't sound at all um, I never really found that a problem I, you know I've always sort of had had fish on them but there was a couple of times lately especially in the wet where I think the line is quite sort of uh, slick in the wet and it just didn't didn't indicate when it when it moved and uh, my last video if you're looking carefully there was there was one take in particular where I think it was on my left hand rod the the red alarm the bobbin was going up and the, the alarm just didn't register at all I don't think it was a fault with the alarm or anything like that I just think because it was moving so slow and because it had been raining the line was wet it was just slipping over that sensor and not actually setting off the vibration sensing um, and I fancy the change anyway so I've invested in some of the um, Edwards custom upgrades the uh, ECU Mark I think they're Mark 1 Compact R Plus or something they're called really beautiful little alarms uh, Tom who works for JAG um, has the same alarms and I, when, I, when I went on the uh, filming trip with them I saw them and thought, oh, they're, they're beautiful, you know, and a uh, little bit different, and they look nice and sort of old school and everything, a bit like Neville's, but a little bit, a little bit more sort of um, custom looking. So, so I went for them, I got a really good deal, found a set on eBay, and it was in the sort of Black Friday deals, so they were really cheap, and um, managed to sell my Delkins as well, so it didn't really cost me very much to, to change them. So far, I'm really happy with them. So. I'll um, probably do a video somewhere down the line, like a bit of a review of those alarms once I've been using them a while. And I'm also going to try and get at some point some live takes so you can kind of hear the alarms and, and see what they look like when you get a take and everything. So so watch out for that, you know, subscribe to the channel if you want to see that in the future. But so far so good, you know, this session they've, they've performed well and it was raining heavily all, all yesterday afternoon and, and last night and they're still still seem to be working this morning so that's a good good first run for them so yeah we'll, we'll see how that goes um, so stay tuned on the channel and um, give a give a like if, if you use Edward's custom upgrades alarms as well or maybe let you know let me know in the comments what alarms you prefer because uh, there's so many out there it'd be interesting to see which which alarms get the, the most votes really so yeah a little bit about my new alarms there um, because I, I know some of you will be wondering why I changed from Dalkin because you'll have seen them in all my uh, previous videos but yeah just uh, just going to be sitting back watching the water now and hoping the fish come in on the feed at some point um, it's still very early so got lots of time we're going to stay till you know sort of mid afternoon so plenty to come yet guys so stay tuned and we will catch up to you a little bit later Right, a little update for you guys. As you can probably see, I've got my sunglasses on, bright blue sky behind me, and the conditions are just not looking right for fishing on the bottom. I think it's about 10 to 12 foot out there, which was great yesterday when we had low pressure and rain and overcast and everything. But this, this blue sky, you know, is sort of saying zigs to me. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm trying to obviously prove these pop up rigs work, so. I've actually moved one of the rods, I'm, I'm sort of, you know, being honest here, I've moved one of the rods down along the margin into some shallower water, it's about six foot there, 
and the wind's trickling down there and the sun's shining on it so so the rod that's on the Ronnie rig I've actually moved off the bait out in open water now put some more bait out down in this um, margin spot and I've put the Ronnie rig on there so you know I'm, I'm still using the rigs I've just moved one of them you know I thought I was trying to make it a fair test by getting them all on the same spot but I'm actually just trying to prove that these rigs work I don't think it matters that much where I put them so I've moved that one now to a spot which I think suits the conditions a lot better um, and if I catch on that running rig obviously that proves that rig works and then we can swap that rig for another rig and hopefully still catch on on all the rigs eventually um, for the you know throughout the rest of the session so so yeah that's what I've done I thought I'd sort of um, let you guys know that I've had a bit of a change there because it's not really happening out on that open water spot that I was catching on yesterday um, I've not really seen any fish show or anything like that you know it's just a bit unlucky really with the with the conditions the way they've gone so yeah I'm hoping a few clouds come in and uh, that might help our, our cause a little bit but uh, yeah we'll see how it goes Right guys, move that rod about 20 minutes ago and we're into a fish already so it just shows you with a bit of thought looking at the conditions you can keep the fish coming I moved it into some shallower water because I thought that this high pressure would move them and it has um, and it hasn't taken very long to get a take so yeah happy days and this one's on the Ronnie rig so that's that's three rigs now <coughs> that we've had to take on so if I get this in I'll show you the hook hold show you why I'm not necessarily a fan of the Ronnie rig um, And yeah, we'll get a different rig on and ping it down there to try and prove that you can catch on any rig. Here we go, guys. That's fish number three. And that's on the Ronnie rig, so happy days. Right, guys, here you go. That's fish number three, and he is a nice, probably, I'd say, 10 to 12 pound mirror. Uh, but look at this, the running the is right in the, right in the corner of his mouth there. And I think when I was playing the fish, I said I wasn't a big fan of one. I think it's because of this. If you if you're always hooking fish in the corner of the mouth, let's get that out. But there's there's the money that did its job. If you're always hooking fish in the corner of the mouth, um, you're more likely to cause damage, I think, as the line sort of pulls and cuts in the corner there. Much happier hooking them in the centre. Um, you know you get right in there it can do damage to that delicate part of the mouth that opens and closes and i think that's because the rig's so low um, when they suck it in it goes back and then as they turn it gets caught in there um so i don't really use a ronnie that much but this shows that at least it does work so let's get this rod back out on a different rig hopefully catch a couple more before we go right guys same rod as last time down to this left hand margin here and this time on the 360 rig so that's four fish on four different rigs now i've only got two rigs left to go the hinge stiff and the flip rig um, and hopefully that's proved my point that it doesn't really matter what rig you use so we'll get this one in um, I'll show you what the hook holds like. Uh, 
be interested actually because I've never caught a fish on a 360 um, so I'll be interested to see what the hook holds like <coughs> and also reputation for mouth damage with this rig I'll be interested to see how this fish is looking uh, right here we go alright guys here we go as you can see got another nice mirror there nice uh, it's hard to see in this light but nice linear scales on it uh, similar size to the last one so probably about I don't know 12 13 pound but the thing with the 360 rig and it has actually happened is the hook has gone into the net there now luckily that hasn't caused any damage to the fish's mouth as you can see well, it's only just hooked in the corner there uh, similar to the Ronnie rig really just hooked in the scissors um, but it's done its job you know but there is potential for mouth damage there because that that hook has gone into the net there so probably won't be using that again but at least this proves that it works so that's four rigs four fish let's get this one back and we're gonna have to wind in one of the other rods because the other rigs are out on the open water spot so I'll wind in the um, hinge stiff or maybe the flip rig and we'll put it out on that same spot and hopefully catch a couple more before we go hours left to go so what I've done is I've put both rods down to that left hand margin spot um, got a hinge stiffer on one and a flip rig on the other and I'm just hoping that the fish play ball so I can finish this challenge and show you that all these rigs work and um, I did also put some more bait on my open water spot just in case you know the clouds come over and it's looking better for the a bite in the deeper water so I've got that um, spot and I've just left no rods on that spot so the fish can come in and have a bit of confidence to feed and I'm only fishing two rods at the moment because these are the two rigs that I need to catch on now so let's see what happens for the last couple of hours guys um, and yeah I'm really hoping that I can uh, catch on all these rigs but we'll see We're coming to the end of this session now and I'm a little gutted that I've only caught on four out of the six rigs. I've tried um, that new spot down to the left there and I had the one fish off it and moved both, uh, both rods down there hopefully to capitalise on you know the fish being in that area but as you can probably see behind me now it's gone overcast again. The weather's really changeable here. It feels quite warm. Um, but the wind's dropped off a bit and it's gone overcast so I've actually put uh, this rod which was the flick rig back out on that open water spot so I've now got <laughs> this, this rod on the hinge stiff rig down to that left hand margin this rod out in open water on the, uh, on the flick rig and uh, yeah I'm just going to have to sit it out and hope that I catch one by the end but hopefully what I've proved in this video is that location is a lot more important than rigs. You know, I've caught on four different rigs on two different locations and when I thought that I should change my location because of the conditions, I actually caught a fish pretty quickly after doing that. Um, and then another one, you know, pretty soon after that on two different rigs. So it shows you that it was more the location than the rig itself. Um, and I think that people put too much emphasis on having the latest rig or you know really fancy rigs when actually at the end of the day you just want something 
simple, easy to tie, effective and something that doesn't tangle um, and then just get it in the right spot you know and uh, the fish don't know what rig you're using um, and if you've got one that you've caught on before there's no reason it won't catch again so maybe this video we could we could call it a day here if I do catch anything else obviously I'll show you that and tell you what rig it was on but I think I've kind of illustrated my point really that it's a bit of a con to think that you need to buy all these different types of components to tie up different rigs for different lakes when actually all rigs will work on all lakes and it's more about what bait and how you how you apply your bait and most important is the location you know you've got to find a fish you've got to find an area where they want to feed um, you know bright sunlight earlier on 10, 12 foot of water wasn't the place to be, so I moved it into shallower water and had two fish within an hour, you know, and now it's gone overcast again. I've brought one back into the open water and, and that may well produce before the end of the video, so who knows, but hopefully I've, I've made my point really. <laughs> um, and yeah, the, the Ronnie rig and the 360 for me, they're just not the best rigs in terms of safety for the fish. Um, and actually the hook holes weren't that secure and I feel like the, the withy rig and the multi rig did a lot better job of getting me a good hook hold so I'm certainly going to be sticking with my withy rig because I just find it the easiest to tie, you know, it's literally a knot that's not with a longer piece of shrink tube and it doesn't get much simpler than that. I'll put a link below on uh, how to tie the withy pool rig, I've, I've done a couple of videos on that. Um, but yeah, you, you make your choice comment down below if, if you think that you know there's a better pop-up rig out there and your thoughts on, on my opinion on this you know do, do you think that I'm right in saying that all these pop-up rigs are basically achieving the same thing with a curved upright section and a boom obviously the chod rig's different but it's still got that curved upright section and um, you know it, it is a rig on its own the chod rig which maybe I'll cover in a different video but these sorts of rigs with a, with a boom section and an upright section, they're all the same. So don't worry too much about rigs and just stick with what you're confident in.